Do please be seated. It's 
good to see so many of you here on this Christmas Eve morning. Hello, little George. <laughs> um, it's my pleasure this morning to welcome once again the Reverend Ian Sutty, who is leading our worship. He's no stranger to us. Um, he has led worship here before. Um, we welcome him once again. And there's actually no notices to give out this morning, except to say Happy Christmas to all of you. And I'll hand over to Ian and every blessing to you, Ian. Thank you. So welcome to you all on this Christmas Eve morning, those of us who are present in church and those of us uh, of you who are listening and watching on Zoom. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. We worship God together, celebrating his coming amongst us in Jesus Christ. We begin our worship with the carol, Once in Royal David City stood a lowly cattle shed.
Sunday by Sunday during Advent, we have been lighting our red Advent candles. And today is the fourth Sunday, a Sunday before Christmas, tomorrow. Uh, so we're going to light the four candles and to give thanks to God that Christmas Day is very near indeed. First candle we lit to remember our great hope in God. Second reminds us of God's word to us through the scripture. The third speaks to us of John the Baptist who prepared the way for the coming of the Lord. And the fourth for Mary, the mother of Jesus, who said, I am the Lord's servant. Be it to me according to your will. Thank you very much. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we come together today looking forward to celebrating again the birth of your son, the child laid in a manger, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We come recalling that first Christmas centuries ago the message proclaimed by the angels, news of great joy. We come remembering the faith of Mary, the thanksgivings of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. We come reminding ourselves of your great love, shown to us and to all people through your coming and sharing our humanity, through your living and dying among us. May we, like Mary, have the faith to believe that with you nothing is impossible like the shepherds to go in heart and mind even to Bethlehem to see what you have done, like the wise men to offer our worship and present to you our gifts, like the great company of the angels to sing glad and joyful songs of praise. And when Christmas is past, may we, like those shepherds, return to our ordinary lives, glorifying and praising you for all that we have seen and heard, the wonder of your love revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, 
for ever and ever. Well, it is good to see you all on this Christmas Eve Sunday and for us to be together on this day before Christmas. And I wonder what you are looking forward to for tomorrow. What are you looking forward to? What's your strategy? <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Anything else? Any more looking forward to? What are you looking forward to? Watching your grandchildren open their presents. Brilliant. Anybody at the back? Are you looking forward to anything? Seeing family? What about you? Seeing your family too, right up. And you're looking forward to anybody coming tomorrow? Santa, right. Anybody else over the other side? What are you looking forward to for Christmas? Looking forward to anything special? What are you looking forward to? Presents, right, very good. Now, I am... Um, I'm looking forward to hopefully some presents and I'm looking forward to my Christmas dinner as well but I'm looking forward to not the same as Nigel what do you think I might be looking forward to yeah <laughs> Christmas pudding right and a little while ago because I like Christmas pudding somebody had given me a nice Christmas pudding hat in fact, when I said I like Christmas pudding, in one week I received three Christmas pudding hats. <laughs> People knitted, so I'm now careful what I say <laughs> when I'm talking about what I like. Um, well, we're looking forward to Christmas. All sorts of different things for Christmas. And I'm pleased to say that if... Uh, Nigel really does like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I can present you <laughs> with two or three <laughs> to wish you well for your Christmas dinner and say thank you for playing this morning. I wonder if anybody else is really looking forward to Brussels sprouts tonight. <laughs> oh, Adrian at the back is. <laughs> Trevor's not so sure. Anybody else? Well, would you like to put your hands up if you like Brussels sprouts? Right. Well, if you, would you like to put your hands up if you positively dislike Brussels sprouts? <laughs> A few. And the rest of us, I guess, well, we don't overeat Brussels sprouts, but on the other hand, we don't dislike them. Well, However you're spending Christmas tomorrow, I hope you have a lovely time and that uh, your Christmas dinner is just what you're hoping for. And uh, if you're presented with some Brussels sprouts, well, you'll be at least polite about it. <laughs> I thought, because I wasn't sure some of the youngsters amongst us would be that keen on Brussels sprouts, but I did think that they might like some chocolate Brussels sprouts. <laughs> so I'll uh, give these to Steve, if I may, because I'm not sure who can eat chocolate and who can't. Uh, and perhaps those of the youngsters who can can have a few while they're with you in, uh, in your session. One or two of you said that you're looking forward to Santa coming tomorrow. And I wonder if you've ever thought, wondered, whether Santa finds his way by a sat nap. <laughs> what do you think? 
Do you have to tell us? What we're going to say. Right up the chimney. Right. Very good. Well, my uh, colleague Ian Forsyth, one of the ministers in the circuit, found this lovely little video called Santa, Does Santa Have a Sat Nav? And I uh, thought, just for the youngsters leave us, we might all enjoy watching this. Does Santa have a sat nav to tell him where to go? Is his sleigh four wheel drive to get him through the snow? Do the elves use Facebook to read your Christmas list? Does Santa's wife use Amazon to find the perfect gift? Don't you worry now, everything's all right. Santa will be fine on Christmas night. Don't you worry now, everything's okay. He'll be here in time for Christmas Day. If you don't have a chimney, then what will Santa do? Don't have a fireplace, where will he climb through? And what about the reindeer? Where will he leave the sleigh? Will he find a parking space on Christmas Day? Don't you worry now, everything's alright. Santa will be fine on Christmas night. Don't you worry now, everything's okay. He'll be Well, for the youngsters, leave us. Let's uh, all sing together our next carol. Come and join the celebration. It's a very special day.
So we come now to listen to the first of our readings from St. Luke's Gospel for this morning. And uh, Ray is going to read to us some verses from chapter one of that gospel. sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message, and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high God. The Lord God will make him a king as his ancestor David was. And he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I am a virgin. How then can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth. It is said that she cannot have children, but she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old for there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. Thanks be to God. We sing together now the carol. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind, made moan.
in a moment or two, Catherine is going to read to us St. Luke's account of the shepherds coming to offer their worship to the infant Christ. But before we hear St. Luke's words, we're going to hear a short meditation, a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek meditation, imagining one of those shepherds called Bert, who's looking back on that holy night. So Bert's going to read for us, otherwise known as my brother-in-law Gordon. And I just say, this is a bit of a, a downgrade. In previous services, for Ian, I've been a king. <laughs> I think, in these days of uh, unconscious bias, I think this is probably because I'm from Cumbria, and last week, yes, this time yesterday, I was gazing at the fields, well, the ones I could see through the mist, uh, at all the sheep. And here I am, Bert. Out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary, you say? Well, it was certainly that. Seth, Saul, Samuel, and me, Bert, were sat on a hillside outside Bethlehem, doing just what we always do, looking at sheep. It isn't the most exciting job in the world. I mean, sheep are sheep. They're woolly, they bar, from time to time they eat grass. That's what they do. I mean, yes, We've, we have to look out for wolves, but to be honest, hour after hour, sat up on a hillside, well, it's hardly what I had in mind as a career choice. My mum wanted me to be a tax collector. I know they're hated, but my mum said, well, she said, if you're going to fleece things for a living, there's more money in, pe in, money in people than sheep. She's probably right. People don't like us, by the way. We're not the most popular people to have around. We're dirty. Our language is a little bit uncouth. And we smell like sheep. Well, like sheep dip, anyway. Who wants that in their lives? But then, there was that night. The out of the ordinary night. The angels in the sky singing to us night. What can I say? It all seems a bit bonkers now when I retell the story. The first one, the, f the first angel, I know, what on earth am I talking about? An angel. It told us not to be afraid. Well, thanks a lot for that, because that's not really going to happen. It's, it's telling us not to be afraid when all I want to do is run away. I was hiding behind a rock at the time. Well, the first one, the first angel, I know, I've done that bit. Well, the angel, no, I haven't. Yes, I have done that. I cleaned my glasses, especially for this job. <laughs> well, the angel, there I go again, angel. What on earth? The angel told us that the Messiah had been born. Well, at least I think that's what they said. To be honest, my memories of that night are all a little bit scrambled. What I do know is that the angel hadn't come alone because the next moment, there's a whole heap of angels in the sky praising God. Noise and light and energy and wow. Well, just, I can't even begin to. Well, anyway, we left. In the accounts, it said, we hurried. That is putting it mildly. Tripped over ourselves, running helter-skelter down to the town. As much to get away from the angels as anything. It took a while, but we found him. It was just as well the angel had told us he'd been lying in a manger. Because, to be honest, that's not the first place you go looking for a newborn king. Not that that's something I've ever done before, looking for a newborn king. And as I say, as I think about it now, that out of the ordinary night, I can't help thinking, why us? Why were we the first ones to be told? To see. If you want people to take notice of some important news, 
the last people you would want to be your main witnesses is a bunch of shepherds smelling of sheep dip. But there you are. A most out of the ordinary thing happened to a bunch of the most ordinary people. Seth, Saul, Samuel, and me, Bert. Creation cracks open and we're the ones God chose to see it. Now that's out of the ordinary. So the reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. At that time, the Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own town. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay, in the inn. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. Thanks be to God. verse from the first of the readings from St. Luke we've listened to this morning. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. A few years back, one early springtime, I received a message on the website of one of my previous village churches. It was from somebody telling me that their daughter was going to be married the following December in a country house on a nearby estate. And could the minister go and conduct a wedding blessing after the legal ceremony? <laughs> well, emails were exchanged Meetings took place, and in mid-December, the wedding duly happened. The couple, who were called William and Laura, had a brief legal ceremony in the country house, 
and then along with their guests came into what was a kind of decommissioned, if that's the right word, Anglican church in the grounds for a wedding blessing. The church was beautifully decorated, there were candles everywhere, huge Christmas tree, quite a spectacle. When we'd been discussing the service, William and Laura had said that they wanted Christmas carols to be sung, they wanted Christmas poems to be read, and at the end, they wanted a very special piece of music to be played that would be a surprise for everyone. It was to be top secret, and so I wasn't going to be told what it was uh, along with any of the other of the guests. It was a lovely Christmas wedding. But when we got to the end, I have to say my heart was a little bit in my mouth. I've had some very odd choices of music for weddings and funerals uh, in the past. But I needn't have worried. As William and Laura began to move down the aisle, the church was filled with the sound of this song. I don't want a lot for Christmas. <laughs> there is just one thing I need. Make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is you. And of course, everybody laughed and applauded, and William and Laura left the church walking on air. Well, we thought a little bit earlier in this morning's service about what we might want for Christmas, what we might be hoping for, for tomorrow. But it's perhaps appropriate on this Christmas Eve just to remember for a moment or two what God was asking for on that very first Christmas and what God might be asking of us at this Christmas. God, we might say, asked a great deal of a number of people to make that first Christmas happen. There was Elizabeth and Zechariah. Suddenly, after years of being just two together, hearing that they were to become parents, parents of no ordinary boy, one who would prepare the way for the coming of the Lord, no less. Joseph, suddenly finding that his wedding plans were going to be disrupted because his wife-to-be, Mary, had conceived a child by the Holy Spirit and who would bear a son called Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. And not least, a great deal was asked of Mary herself. The angel went in to her and said to her, Greetings, most favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by what the angel said and wondered what this greeting might mean. Unlike our Roman Catholic and high Anglican friends, at least as far as the Methodist Church is concerned, for most of the year Mary doesn't feature very much in our thinking. One renowned Methodist minister, the late Neville Ward, reckoned that there was a deafening silence in our church when it comes to Mary. I suspect it's probably the same for the Baptist church as well. But on this Sunday, of all Sundays, Mary surely ought to have a special place in our thinking. It's been rather imaginatively suggested that God, as it were, held his breath as he waited for Mary's response to the angel's greeting. You found favour with God. You shall conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Was the whole universe on tiptoes, waiting for Mary's reply. And her response, rings in our ears. A 
kind of model for all of us who try to follow in the way of Jesus. Here I am. I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me according to your word. It's a resounding yes to God. The loving purposes of God were to be fulfilled through the faithful response of Mary. And isn't that response a model for all of us as we think about what God might be asking of us this Christmas time? God asks us to be open to his word for us here and now. God asks us to hear it, receive it, and act upon it so that his loving purposes might be fulfilled in us here and now. Saying yes to God. Little book I've been reading of daily passages for Advent says yes is the first word you need in your dictionary if you are to be a disciple. Yes to God. Yes to change. Yes to love. Yes to an unknown future. Yes to God because there is no greater Amen. And if that's what God is asking of us this Christmas, nothing less than our joyful, obedient response to his word, then in the midst of all the things that will be going around us in the next few days, we ought just to find time to hear again his word for us. We ought to find time for a short prayer, for the strength and confidence we need to act upon it. One of the great Christmas blessings asks for just this, to be open to God, to find the strength that he offers us in Christ, and the will to follow through what he sets before us. It goes like this, may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be ours this Christmas and always. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Almighty God, the source of all life and love, we worship you this Christmas for coming to us in Jesus as a helpless child so that we might see and know you. Forgive us if we lose sight of the generosity of your Christmas love. Help us to accept it graciously so that we may find true peace again. In the name of the Prince of Peace, we bring you our prayers for the peace of the world. A world that seems to be so riven apart by conflict and violence. We think of the peoples of Israel and Palestine, of the Ukraine, 
of the Yemen, so many places where people's lives are torn apart. We pray for the peace of the Christ child and that those who have authority and power and influence may use what has been entrusted to them for the good of all people. And we pray too for those we know who need the peace of the Christ child in their lives here and now. We think particularly this morning of Samantha, our minister, at a very difficult family time. We think of those others who are on our hearts and in our minds. remember those who we commend to God's gracious keeping and pray that we may be so open to God's word that we may show Christmas love to the world and that our lives may speak of God's good news for all people in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing together the carol, Born in the night, Mary's child, a long way from your home. gather now around the Lord's table. After some prayers of thanksgiving, the stewards and deacons will bring round the bread, and when you've received the bread, then please 
eat as it comes to you. And then they will bring round the wine and we ask that you might hold on to the, uh, the little glass until everyone's been served and then we will drink together. Please will you join with me in the responses to the prayer. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is not only right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For the birth of Jesus, your Son, our Saviour, cradled in the manger at Bethlehem, we thank you, Heavenly Father. For the love and gentle care of Mary, his mother, most blessed of all women, we thank you, Heavenly Father. For shepherds, keeping watch over their flocks by night, who came with haste to worship Christ, the newborn King. We thank you, Heavenly Father. For wise men from the East, who followed the star and presented their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the light and love of this Christmas season in our hearts and in our homes, bringing joy and gladness to all, we thank you, Heavenly Father. And in our joyful gratitude, we join our voices with the angels who are always singing to you. Holy, 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 God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and redeeming God, we see your grace and truth in Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth.
Christ's precious blood was shed for us. So let us drink with glad and thankful hearts. Let's pray together. Lord God, Holy Spirit, may that word which was made flesh now be born again amongst us in the faithful hearts of his people and in these gifts of bread and wine that here on earth we may share his risen life and come at the last to that eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sing together the hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King. Christmas blessing again. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be ours this Christmas and always. Amen. Amen. We say together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.